Here, we'll be solving another interesting problem from Bhaskaracharya's Lilavati, the old math text translated by Henry Colebrook in 1817. Uh, the problem statement says, one pair out of a flock of geese remained sporting in the water and saw seven times the half of the square root of the flock proceeding to the shore tired of the diversion. And then Bhaskaracharya is asking his daughter Lilavati, tell me dear girl, the number of the flock. So I have highlighted the numerical values given here. One pair means just two geese remain in water. After the remaining flock, uh, which happened to be seven times half the square root, so square root multiplied by seven by two, have flown off to the shore because they got tired of swimming. Uh, well, let us uh, put this in mathematical form. So this is the equation that we have here. Say x is the quantity originally present in the flock and 7 upon 2 times its square root have flown away. So that I have subtracted and that has left behind the right hand side which is 2. Now like always we will try to solve this in a graphical manner and uh, this equation tells us that it involves quantities x and its square root. So for x let us choose this number line and call it our x axis while for root of x we will be taking the vertical direction or the y axis and that will create a graph, a graph of root of x against x or y is equal to root of x. If you want to plot this graph in a manual uh, fashion, you will have to do a lot of work like first getting a few points, say 0 and its square root, so 0 comma 0, then 1 and its square root, say 1, then 4 and its square root which is 2. Uh, then 9 and the square root 3. So like that I am taking all the known squares and their square roots. So 25 we go up 5. Then these 6 points that we have got including the origin of course will have to be interpolated connected with a smooth curve. Now this not only involves a lot of work that we uh, did here but it also involves a large amount of error which is unacceptable for a good solution. But since we are using microstation which has a powerful geometry box like capability, it can plot parabolae in seconds. All we need to do is uh, take say this point over here 25,5 then take its vertex which is O here and from that we will be going up half this height 2.5. If you want to know why this works, you can see the construction by clicking here and then you just have to go to the origin and voila, our uh, uh, parabola is ready. It not only passes through uh, these endpoints 0, 0 and 25, 0, but it interpolates all the other points like 1, 1 and 4, 2 and 9, 3 and 16, 4 and so on. So we have got a perfect interpolant here. Well. Uh, next, uh, we are going to uh, take the second term. Let me get rid of this construction. Now let us get to the second term, 7 upon 2 times root x. So this is square root x, we have taken it along the y direction. So all we need to do is take this graph and scale it along the y direction. So that is what I have done. In x direction, the scale is 1, nothing changes. While in y, we magnify it by 3.5. And then we'll make a copy so that we can see the original graph as well as the magnified or scaled graph over here. So now let us see how this calculation takes place. So we'll take some arbitrary value of x and subtract this quantity and see how the right hand side gets worked out. So for that I have taken some arbitrary value of x say 20. From there I'll plot a vertical line till it hits the graph of 3.5 times root x. So this is the quantity, this vertical line's length is a quantity that needs to be subtracted from x, the horizontal line's length. So how to do that? Well, take this vertical line and rotate it about this point. So now we have taken x and from that we have come back 3.7 times root of x. So whatever remains here is our quantity on the right hand side. Of course, this uh, uh, construction can be simplified if you realize that this vertical line and this horizontal part are having the same length. Moreover, they are perpendicular. So they are going to form an isosceles right angle triangle like this. 
So instead of you know doing this rotation, we could have drawn this line, the hypotenuse, which will be of course at 45 degrees. So that gives us a construction for solving this problem. Of course, in that case, we'll not be starting from x because we don't know it. Instead, we'll be starting from this quantity on the right hand side. So let us do that. Let us take the quantity on the right hand side, which is 2. From here, I'll draw a 45 degrees line till it hits this graph of 3.5 times root x. And then from there, I just drop uh, a vertical down, a perpendicular on the x axis. Wherever it hits the x axis, that is our solution. So to start with, there were 16 geese in the flock. And finally, let us solve this problem once again algebraically using the formula given in Dilavati 900 years ago. Here I have written our uh, equation or rather the form of that equation to which the formula applies. Uh, there is a quantity, unknown quantity x, whose square root is multiplied by c and then added or subtracted from the unknown quantity itself, resulting in this quantity q, which is given to us. So if that is so, we can use this formula to figure out x. Uh, of course, one can show this to be uh, equivalent to the quadratic equation formula. Uh, but uh, this is something that uh, developed 900 years ago and it's just as powerful. Uh, just another way of doing this. Uh, let us substitute the values. So for coefficient of square root x, we have 7 upon 2. And the remaining quantity after subtraction was 2. Just one pair of geese was remaining. And if we substitute those values in this uh, formula, we get 16. So to start with, there were 16 geese in the flock. 